I really enjoy photography and taking pictures of the sky and of sunsets um, and kind of explaining why we see the colors that we see and why the clouds are doing what they're doing. The natural world and the fascination that I have with it um, is really all that has inspired me. Growing up in Buffalo, um, Lake Effect Snow was always the big thing that, you know, made me want to go into weather. Um, every winter, you're looking at the forecast, um, looking for that next big snowstorm. So just, you know, all the snowstorms growing up from, from Lake Effect Snow just made me really um, fall in love with that in particular. But then all weather, you know, you're looking at one thing in the weather and, and all the rest of it just becomes interesting too. This was the year that Hurricane Charlie tracked directly over my house in Daytona Beach, Florida. And in the midst of this, my sister and I went out during the middle of the eye, stared up and around us, looked at the damage, felt how calm it was. Very soon after we had to go back inside of our boarded house with all of our animals, chickens, cats, hamsters alike, and brace for the rest of Hurricane Charlie. For the longest time as a child, I wanted to be a doctor because I wanted to do a job that helped people. And then when I was about 17, I guess you could say I was a bit of a late bloomer, Hurricane Katrina happened. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a meteorologist. I thought, what can I do with my science knowledge, my weather knowledge, to try to help people stay informed ahead of the storm? My parents say I used to point out each weather vane on the top of houses and barns when I was a kid, calling them vavas. As I grew up, three events really ignited my passion for weather. The first was a microburst or a straight line wind event that hit my hometown. The second was a blizzard of 1996, which dumped 30 inches of snow. And then third, Tropical Storm Bonnie in 1998, which I witnessed from the Jersey Shore. During the summer of 1998, on our family's annual vacation trip down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, that was the first time we were going to be impacted by a tropical system. It was Hurricane Bonnie that was heading toward the Carolina coastline. Unfortunately, we did have to evacuate with that system. But at the time, I was very afraid of most storms, and I was glued to the TV coverage just following the progress of Bonnie. But after that, that fear eventually turned into more of a fascination. I was in Charleston, West Virginia at the time. We received around 20 inches of snow, drifts were three feet high, and I was just blown away and astounded and curious, and I wanted to know more what caused this, and that really uh, just kind of sparked my curiosity. I grew up in Colorado and loved experiencing the many snowstorms and blizzards we had. My focus shifted in 2008 when my hometown of Windsor, Colorado was hit by an EF3 tornado, and I witnessed the devastation the storm caused firsthand. In talking with friends and family after the storm, I realized I was more interested in how the weather impacts people. One of my best memories was January of 78. We had three snowstorms in one week and yours truly was in his glory because I loved the snow. I also liked getting off of school. My grandfather was a National Weather Service meteorologist for over 35 years. And he also served a brief stint on television in Northeast Ohio. I believe that the combination of my attraction to weather and looking up to my grandfather is why I'm appreciative to be called a meteorologist. When I was younger, I used to call up my parents at work daily telling them the forecast. That was a starter. When I was in sixth grade, I put on a little newscast and I was the meteorologist. We had to pick a different country. We chose the Netherlands out of all places. It was just at random. And uh, we did the Netherlands news and I was the weatherman for that uh, little broadcast. And we did that in front of our class. When I was very young, around four years old, I remember Hurricane Donna moving up the East Coast. I remember all the excitement about the storm. And I remember looking out the, my, my window from my kitchen at the house behind us, and that man was up on the roof. And he was trying to repair his roof as the shingles were being blown off. And then after the storm, I remember all the trees being knocked down, all the damage with that. First, when I was 13, lightning struck our house. It blew out a hole in the wall. It uh, exploded all the light bulbs. It burned out all the appliances. Um, it shot lightning out of the light sockets. It was just a really spectacular experience. And the other thing was Hurricane Hugo in 1989, when I was 15, um, really wrecked our area, knocked down thousands of trees. We were without power for a week, more than a week, without telephone, 
for two weeks. Weather plays a major role in farming. I remember my dad and uncles rushing out to bale hay before rain moved in, trudging through snow to get to the barn and waiting for the power to turn on to finish milking the cows. I would help my dad predict the weather and would get up early and sit and watch the weather. And that love of the weather led me to go to Penn State to get my meteorology degree and work at AccuWeather. The Superstorm of 1993 comes to mind and only three years later, the blizzard of 96 produced 30 inches of snow in my backyard. Also in 1994, a deadly F3 tornado touched down only about eight miles from my house and it left a big impression on how the weather can bring both beauty but also danger and destruction. The atmosphere is an amazing and captivating thing to study and experience and we have front row seats to the big show every day.